do you know that you are the first guest on this podcast that is Arab, Emirati, and Jiu Jitsu? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I love it, brother. And listen, I really appreciate you coming on on the short notice that we had. And there are so many people I'm excited for because many people contacted me on Instagram and they were pumped for you coming onto this show. They wanted to hear from you. They're like, yes, let's go. And a big shout out to your friend, Sultan Al Hosseini, because he really wanted to hear he, you on this podcast. He, 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 to- he told me about it, you know, I was just cheering, you know, watching some Asul Garcia videos. Uh-huh. And he uh, just sent for me, hey, have one guy, the Jits guy. He want to make one interview with you. Nice. So and I nice. was like, uh, for sure, man. I love it. It's I love like, it. You know, a nice opportunity. I love it. Listen, you, you're a guy that has a lot of love in the jiu-jitsu community. A lot of people that uh, like to hear from you and that you were an inspiration to. I got to tell you. Alhamdulillah. Absolutely. I'm absolutely, absolutely. And it's a real pleasure for me to have you on this podcast and for me and you to, you know, to sit down, talk, shabab, just hang out. You know, and pick your brain. I think there's a lot of good that can come out of this interview for you, for me, and for everybody listening in the jiu-jitsu community. Coaches, students, people in the organizations. This is important for us as people, as as members of the community to sit together and talk, man. No formalities, no camera, light action, and all of this stuff. Just guys hanging out. It's amazing, you know. I want to just give you what's inside my heart, you know, in my mind. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm like uh, so motivated. I can do this all day, you know. Just ask me any question, I'll just answer, you know. I love that. answers for it. I I love that when Sultan sent you a message, you were watching Marcelo (laughs) Garcia videos. Like, this is what you live and breathe. You, you know, because in this, in the Corona, the IBJJF channel on YouTube, they start to uh, like uh, post a lot of fights about Masur Garcia. And this guy is like uh, my idol, you know. Nice. I, I like him, I watch him a lot, you know. And, uh, you know, it's like uh, I even kind of uh, adopt my game, like his game, you know. I like to hear that. Yeah, okay, so interesting. This guy is like, if you watch some of my fights, like. Uh, I use a lot of the one leg X, you know, oh, yeah. and, and he does it all the time. Butterfly yes. God yes. sweeps, you know, the way yes. he pass the God, you know, I, I'm inspired f- about him, you know, it's uh, really it. amazing, this guy, even I, though I never met him in my life. I have seen you fight many times. I've seen you live whenever I go to the events and I watched a few of your fights before this podcast because I wanted to, you know, like the mats don't lie. I love that quote that the coaches tell us, you know? And when you want to get to know somebody in terms of their jujitsu, just watch them roll. They don't need to say shit. In boxing, I'm the toughest guy. I can knock you out. I can do this in, in Muay Thai. Jujitsu, no, man. There's no lucky. You either know or you don't know. And I liked watching your you're fights. You're fucked, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. You're in trouble. Like, if you talk shit off the mats <laughs> and then you go on the mats, uh, and you- it do- Mm, you better back it up, man. You have to back it up. Yes, yeah. hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, but we're gonna get all in. We're gonna get into that, I'm sure. So you you, you talked about uh, in like this crazy time that we're going through, this Corona phase, never happened before. Everybody's locked up. Life as we know it is shut man, down. Shit's fucked up, man. Absolutely, it's fucked up. Absolutely. So so, what are you doing during these times? How are you spending your days? Are you still exercising? Yeah, I'm like uh, exercising, not like mm-hmm. before, you know. But I'm still going, you know, I make some home workouts, but like, uh, it's very basic, you know, because there's no equipment, there's nothing I can lift, you know. Oh my God, okay. But I make like a body weight, some push-ups, burpees, like some stretches, some pull-ups. I have one bar in my house. Okay. And uh, I do uh, jiu-jitsu with uh, my friends, like uh, Sultan Mm -hmm. and uh, Salem. You know Salem? Salem. Uh, I know Sultan Hosani. Yeah. Okay. And so Salem. I do with him. But I know you don't know him. No, I don't think I do. He's a short guy, you know, like a little bit fat. Yeah. If yeah, you yeah, saw yeah. him, you, you will know. I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, you know, and uh, we just uh, drill and make specifics uh, every day, but we cannot make the normal pohada because we don't have like a lot of space. But we make some specifics in nice. the. In the, like uh, some situations okay. where it's bad for, uh, like it's a shit p- uh, position, you know, like uh, side control or mount or back, you know. I get you. So, so I, I don't go like a full pull hard because uh, there's not a lot of space, you know. Right. And it's like a good opportunity to work on the defensive mode, you know. Mm-hmm. I get you. I get because, you. It's it's yeah, nice because, that you, you know, have like, that. Yeah, we're working on. You know, it's like uh, one advice from my. 
coach master mm-hmm. he told me to always focus on uh, like some situations where you feel like uh, stuck mm-hmm. or you don't feel comfortable uh, on it you know i feel comfortable playing god i feel comfortable playing pass Good. but i sure don't feel comfortable when someone making side control me or take the back you know i see i see so, so you're working on on the difficult positions for you in this time like you're w- working on these with your friends yeah nice th- that's nice. what i'm doing you know nice and i like to hear it's really important you know I like, like imagine you're that. fighting with one guy uh-huh. and he come and he come to your side control and you you don't know how to act he will submit you know it's, absolutely uh, absolutely it's that simple you know it's absolutely different that way. So yes. you're saying now in the Corona times, you've got your home gym set up. You've got friends, close friends of yours that you guys drill and train together just to keep the, you know, the, the action, the jujitsu muscles going. Um, unfortunately, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people that in the jujitsu community now, coaches, students, nobody's training anything. It's going to be, who knows, one month, two months. Do you think it's going to impact people's jujitsu? I mean, like, you know, for sure. Because, you know, this... Never happened in history before for the jiu-jitsu community. Oh, yeah. It's like a big surprise, you know. But uh, I was watching uh, one video mm-hmm. about John Danahar. Yeah. He was talking about, you know, if your body is not on the mat, the mm-hmm. tatami, your mind can be on the tatami, you know. I like that. Like, you can uh, walk on uh, different things, but involving jiu-jitsu, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. You can walk on the theory part the tactics part you know you can Absolutely. watch like uh, uh and these days i've been watching a lot of uh, jiu-jitsu fight more than ever you know because uh, to develop you know how how the guy acts the little details how yeah. the tactics tactics he do you know to uh, nice make his game so I, i'm lucky to have uh, you know like a mat and some close friends with me Absolutely, to man. make the deal but even though if i don't have you know I will not just sit here and not do uh, nothing, just watching TV. I'm, I'm going to like, you know, watch a lot of fights, you know, get to know uh, like more guys. I don't necessarily watch even the high level competitors, you know, like sometimes I, I watch some brown belts fight. But interesting. What I see, what I see, like uh, the guys that are not so famous, but they make uh, the jiu-jitsu like uh, so good and so intelligent. Right. That I can learn something from it, you know, like a one way to engage uh, your game. You know, it's uh, really amazing, you know. And Man, that's very smart of, of you. I like that. You're one of the first people to ever tell me this. And I really like this mindset that you have, because if you think about it, they are the future of jujitsu, <laughs> you know. So it's good to watch what the future of jujitsu is doing. You know, because uh, my master, mm-hmm. he, he taught me one thing, you know. He said there's uh, five ways to uh, get a good performance, you know. Right. It's in the physical side, mm-hmm. the technical side, the mind the set, mm. and the theory and the tactics, you know. Interesting. In this, in this time, you know, almost everybody don't have, uh, they can't work on the physical and the technical side. But they can Absolutely. work on the say, other side, you know, like mental, theory, and tactics, you know. Right. So it's no excuse. If there's no math, you can still practice jiu-jitsu, you know. But in your mind, you know, like John Danaha said, you don't need to be... Uh, your mind don't have to be outside the mat. I love it. That, and that's very true, man, because I, for one, I've gone through a situation where I've had injuries, right? And they kept me off of the mat for a long time. But man, I don't know what happened to me. I caught a very bad bug of jujitsu. And even in that time when I'm off the mat, I'm just watching every video out there of John Danner. So I, we're going to relate a lot, man. If you watch those videos, we're going to have a good time talking to each other because I, I, I for me, it's just... I want to engulf my life in jiu-jitsu. I want everything around me to be jiu-jitsu. And I feel you are the same. <laughs> well, I'll be like so depressed if I don't do it, you know? Nice. Like, uh, you know, it's the best thing I can do all day, you know? I like mm-hmm. to joke people, submit the guys, Love you know? It. But imagine if you stay in the house, it's depressing, man. Like, oh, uh, yeah. the thing, uh, what you love, you cannot do it. So it's Absolutely. really depressing. It's dangerous yeah. too because, man, I, I have, I'm married and I have kids and my wife, when I don't do jujitsu, like before Corona, so let's say there's a time I'm not doing jujitsu, she comes up to me, she's like, when's jujitsu? <laughs> <And> go! <laughs> she knows there's something wrong with me, bro. I start fidgeting, I start like itching and I'm not myself. I need to train, I need to go do something to do with it. So, Man, because jujitsu is not like the other sports, you know? Absolutely. Like, it's, I always say it's a lifestyle, you know? Yes. It's because it changed your... Uh, perspective in every way of life you know mm-hmm. and 
it's fascinating, you know, this uh, lifestyle, you know, because it's it will put you to the test in every aspect, you know, mentally, physically. It will show how strong you are. I love and, it. So uh, true. It's really amazing, you know, and if you get, uh, like, uh, you, le- you leave it for a couple of days, uh, for sure you come depressed. I think almost all of the jiu-jitsu community now in the world mm-hmm. is so depressed, you know, they want to come inside the mat, so. Brother, man, I, from- they're training with chairs. They're training with rubber bands. <laughs> of course they're depressed, man. <laughs> man, like, uh, it's crazy, man. I- I'm just saying I'm so lucky to have some of my uh, close friends, Good. like brothers, they turn with me, you know. Good, good to hear. It's, uh, it's a good, I'm grateful for it. You know? Th- that's a blessing, man. So, okay, let's take a few steps back. I, I definitely want to get really deep into jiu-jitsu with you. But first, we need to understand who is Omar, right? So, how old are you now? Uh, next month, I will be 20 years old. 20 years old. All right, nice. Happy birthday. Happy early birthday to you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. In, my in, inshallah. I, I hope we all celebrate your birthday outside of this lockdown, inshallah. you know. But either way, I wish you a very successful year ahead. Um, inshallah, inshallah. So I wanted to get to know you a little bit. Did you grow up in Abu Dhabi? Uh, yeah, I grew up in Abu Dhabi. I was born in Nas al Okay. But uh, when I was like one year old, you know, mm-hmm. my family had like some issues like financially. Sure. They find one opportunity to work in Abu Dhabi. So we moved to live there, mm-hmm. you know, and we've been here ever since. And you studied in Abu Dhabi schools your entire life. And OK, so yeah. oh. so what kind of a kid were you growing up? Ah uh, man, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was I was always shy, you know, I was. I was the guy who sits alone, you know? Okay. And I wasn't so interesting person, you know? I was like, uh, just uh, the average Joe, you know? And uh, one day when I come to the middle school, okay, uh, there was the Jiu-Jitsu school, you know? Under, yes. under the program of Sheikh Muhammad. Right. And I saw some of the guys who stay in my class, they go there and they train, you know? Mm-hmm. And I saw them and I was like, man, what's this, you know, what's the sport, you know? It's like uh, people like uh, fighting, using a lot of power. Mm-hmm. And I was not so powerful. I was the skinny guy okay. always, you know? Nice. And, and, and one friend, he come, invited me. He said, oh my, come, try one day. And I was like, oh man, I don't want to, I just want to chill. So it was optional? And, it wasn't uh, like mandatory to do jiu-jitsu, just option. It was uh, mandatory once a week, you know. Once a week, okay. And uh, yeah, and I didn't give that attention, you know. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Ah, oh, man." And but one guy he come to me and said, "Hey, Ty, come one uh, day, you know." Okay. And I was like, "Ah, I don't wanna, you know." And then he told, he kept like convincing me. Mm-hmm. And I said, "Man, you know, I just tight, you know, once." And I went there, you know, and I trained like uh, for I guess. 30 minutes okay it was not like a it was just the boys like fighting and fundamentals and yeah yeah and i just go there and the the coach said okay choose one guy mm-hmm. to uh train with like a pohada okay and i was i chose, I chose the smallest guy there you know <laughs> because uh, you know uh, I was scared, you know. Okay. And there was some like uh, guys, little bit big, and I chose the smallest guy, like even smaller than me. Right. And he just come there, he choked me, he armbarred me, wow. and I don't know what happened, you know, like. So that kid's I been said, doing jujitsu for a while. Yeah, like uh, he he was also a beginner, you know, but okay. like been doing for three months, you know, and it was my first day, you know. Yeah. And okay. I said, man. He he killed me, you know, and I felt, uh, you know, like a bad. I felt like uh, depressed, and I just left. I said, man, I don't want to come back, and you know, they kicked my butt, you know, and I just don't want to do it anymore. And and you felt so, like you, you didn't feel the connection with it from the first class. You felt like kind of bad after that experience. Yeah, I felt like horrible, you know. The guy's okay. old kid, he killed me, and I was like. <laughs> I even hated him the, ever since. I, even outside of that, you know? <laughs> nice. And uh, it, it was weird, you know? And, uh, but, you know, the time, like, um, we moved on, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, there was the word for 2012. All right. Uh, and um, 
So so wait, what what year was this when you started jujitsu? When you first, did your first? 2012. Okay. You know, and uh, it was uh, I, the first time I put the kimono. It was I guess in January or February. All right. But in April was the World Pro, you know. And you went for, for the that. World Pro in your first year. Yeah, the first three months. You know? I love it. Okay. <laughs> and, and you know, I went for my. Uh, Instructor the school at that time, it's Hedy Rodriguez. He's a really good friend of me. I'm very grateful for him until now. Okay, He's, we're still talking, you know. Uh, he, I went for him and I told him, Coach, please, I want to come to fight, you know. Okay. And I, I, I didn't know anything about it, I just wanted to go, you know. I want to tie it, you know. I want to tie the atmosphere for the competition, right? And you he, were 12 years old, said, yeah, yeah. Very uh, cool. Almost 12. At, Very cool. At this time, like uh, eight years ago. Okay. Uh, and, you know, he told me, okay, but you're not ready, you know. But I was stubborn, you know. I, I just kept insisting. I like that, everything. okay. And he just put me, you know. <laughs> and I go there and I, the first round, the guy just took me down to points. I lost. And I was devastated, you know. Like, I felt like... Uh, Really bad, and I saw my uh, partners, my teammates. They didn't, they didn't become champions, but like some, they was silver medalist, bronze, and it was like a very young age, you know, like absolutely, uh, like uh, in their category for uh, under twelve, you know, under yes. thirteen. But I was so devastated when I lost. You took and it I to heart. Yeah, I, I, I didn't invade them, you know. I didn't mm. uh, feel bad that they won. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I was happy for them. Nice. But I, I told myself, I deserve, you know. I okay. want to be. Okay. Like, I deserve one opportunity. And that day, uh, I promised myself that I would do my best to be in the podium. That's when you caught that bug for competing. Yeah. And I wow. said, man, I, I, I deserve to be a champion, you know. Wow. And uh, at that time, you know, all what I was thinking about is... Just to be the guys and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, win. Just win, win, to take uh, some gold medals, you know. Nice. And I was not, like, uh, the best guy, you know. Okay. I, I, I didn't achieve that goal, like, like in that period, you know. So I remember there was one competition. Mm -hmm. And I went there, you know. I've been training, like, for three months. Okay. And I started to, like... Uh, Beat some guys in my uh, school, you know, and I said, man, maybe I'm good, you know, I'm ready. But of course, I was a kid, you know, I didn't think like now, I didn't have the enough maturity. Sure. I go for, for one competition and, uh, you know, it's like uh, basic stuff here. Yeah. It's not like a uh, high interaction. Right. And e even me, I wasn't so good, but I make it to the final mm -hmm. and I lost uh, because one guy, he come on, he made mount on me. Okay. And I said, man, I check it out the time. I said, man, I cannot win. So I just stepped. You were losing I four points up. or you were losing more? No, maybe like uh, 13 points or something. Oh, no shit. <laughs> oh, no shit. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like uh, more than 10 points. Wow, and okay. I said, check it out the clock. It's almost one minute, I guess. I don't okay. remember clearly. And uh, I said, man, I'll step. I don't care. I, I'm, I'm getting like a silver medal. So oh, wow. I just wanted the medal, you know? Oh, wow. And... And, you know, I got the silver medal. Right. I got school. Like uh, the normal days, you know, just going there. Been training in one day just like uh, 15 or 13 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, you know. Right. Uh, and one day, I, the coach ages, he come to me and he told me, oh my, Sheikh Muhammad, mm -hmm. he invited the guys who won this competition, silver and gold medals. And I said, Wow. I'm going for the Shea. It's like a big pleasure, you know. It's like a big thing, you know. And he told me, you need to go tomorrow. You need to fix everything. Come with one kimono. And I was like, man, really? Wow. I, I thought he was joking, but he was talking serious, you know. Wow. Uh, and uh, the next day, I go. And uh, I checked out, like, the old guys, you know, like the professionals. Mm -hmm. Like Faisal and... Some other guys, you know, there. And I check and I say, man, wow. Look at these guys, you know, like they're like a big champions, you know. Right. I want to 
I want to be like one of them, you know, like they had that charisma, the attitude, you know. And I was like a small kid. I said, man, wow, I want to be there. I go and met the Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad. Nice. And was like, uh, I was so nervous, you know, I don't know why. I'm sure. It's like uh, a big uh, and a huge uh, step in sure. uh, my life, you know. And I go there, I met him. And, man, it was one of the best feelings in my life. I went inside this palace, see palace. Right. And I said, man, one hall of that uh, palace is bigger, maybe 10 times than my house. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I, I was like, man, uh, it's like, uh, you know, it's like the <laughs> Disney movies, you know. Yeah. It was so amazing, man, you know. And What an experience. Uh, yeah, man, I just came... Uh, I, when I finished from the sheikh, I said, man, I can't believe it. You know, I did it. You know, I went for the sheikh. But still in my mind, I want to win the world prize, you know. The, the world prize, I wanted the gold medal, you know. Wow. But I, I love that attitude thing. you have. I love the attitude you have towards it. And man, it's really incredible the doors <laughs> that this opened for you. Don't you think? Yeah, man. Like, I'm really gay for God in the is for Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed because he yes. changed my life you know yes uh, if it wasn't for him I, I'll not be Omar Fadli today you know yes so uh, it was a beautiful experience you know and uh, but I kept my mind for the word bro you know yes to achieve it 2013 I'm going for it and I start to fight some competitions okay. once I made it to the final and what do you know it I fight with the uh, Hamad Nawad okay you know and but we were so kids i didn't know him he looked like that uh kid who make a lot of problems you know with a bad attitude you know Mashkelji. and i was always <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's it and uh, i was the shy kid you know so right. when i saw him he's like uh talking shit you know and uh his attitude was like uh, a troublemaker you know okay and i said man i will fight this guy in the final okay and i Went to set the match with him. Uh, I jumped for the close guard. <laughs> and you know what he did? He just grabbed me and he slammed me so hard oh. on the ground. And, and I don't know why. The FA didn't stop. No DQ? The next thing, no DQ, man. Whoa. And the next thing, I felt like uh, I blacked out like for a couple of seconds. Oh, the next shit. thing I wake up. He armed my arm bad me, you know? No. I still talk about this. <laughs> yeah, man, it's crazy. I still talk about the, this with him, and he's telling me, no, I didn't slam you. Oh, But shit. I know he slammed me, you know? And, you know, this was crazy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, how, how much is crazy? I like this guy, you know? I like this dude. Now you it's like crazy, him. Man. He, did, he, he just slammed me so hard. <laughs> yeah man <laughs> it was the first day i saw him in my life and now we have like a good relationship you know i love it but i love it that's a hell of a friendship story by the way so crazy man <laughs> yeah it's it's a weird one you know absolutely this guy is like uh, we always fight but we we always love each other you know right he's, so uh, he's a close friend with me you know i i, I like this story you're, you're sharing and this experience because from everything you're telling me, you didn't have that like a lucky horse experience starting jujitsu. Like you had it rough. You lost your first competition. You you got second place in the big one, and then in the other major competition that you wanted to get gold in, a guy body slams you, knocks you out, and arm bars you. So you definitely didn't have an easy route into jujitsu competitions. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's epic. Man, it was so hard until. Uh... Until 2016, it was so hard. Man. I love it. I, I, but, that's fu- know, that's, a, that's I, amazing, dude. That 2012 to 2016, you had it hard and you still persevered, man. Man, it was hard really, you know. But I guess that forged me, you know. Because yes. looking back, you know, I think if I was winning all competitions as a kid, you know. Right. M- you know, maybe I get spoiled, you know. I say, man, I'm the champion, you know. Why I need to fight anymore, so. Sure. Exactly. That's very true. That's very, very true. You know, Amar, there's a lot of people that I believe are talented in jujitsu and other things, but they have this problem where they get heartbroken quickly. They do it, something that gives them excitement. They, they get this feeling like you, they imagine themselves on the podium, they imagine them successful. 
then they try it and they fail, they get heartbroken and they run away. But they could have been amazing like you. They could have been super talented, but they just didn't do it. They didn't achieve their full potential, man, because yes. ego or some other ways. That's why, in my point of view, mm -hmm. I prefer if I have one kid, mm -hmm. I prefer he lose when his early years, you know, like uh, that period, you know, until I get you. He get that mindset to mm -hmm. never give up, you know, because some, if you just give them, if they just win all, they get spoiled, you know. At that time, I knew a lot of people. They had a huge potential. Looking back now, mm -hmm. when I was a kid, a lot of people had like a huge potential. They can uh, even now be like uh, amazing, but they just quit, man. They quit in the first sign of, you know, defeat. They was winning everything at that time. Mm -hmm. Gold medals everywhere, you know. But when they start to grow up, you know, they they start to feel like the real jiu-jitsu, you know. Because right. let's be honest, when you was a kid, like 12 or 13 years old, it's not the real jiu-jitsu like now, you know. Right, absolutely. And uh, when they start to face the real level, you know, they mm -hmm. said, man, you know, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. I want to focus on other things in life, you know. I get you. And, you know, it's... It's tough, you know, because it's hard to change that mindset. From, that's why I believe if I have a kid, you know, I will not push him when he's young. I want him to experience defeat so he can work hard, you know. Listen, I, I think and, I uh, think I, I think you will make a great role model, not just for your own kids in the future, inshallah, but for a whole generation of people because I hear you talking, man. You have the wisdom of a person that's like 50 plus, you don't have the wisdom of a 20 year old. And another thing I want to tell you, you said early on in our interview that you were 12 years old or 11 years old and you were skinny, quiet and not interesting. I, I beg to differ because myself and a lot of people I know around that age, I grew up quiet. I grew up shy. I was the nerd, the quiet kid. But we end up, you know, holding into a lot of thoughts. We think a lot. We, we overthink things, and that's what makes us potentially really good at things. It's just we have to get out of our shell and actually go for it and try it. And that's the drive that people need. That's what you got lucky. You know, you, you got that drive and somehow it clicked and you kept continuing with jujitsu. Big respect for you on this, man, really. But, so impressed by you. Man, man, I really appreciate this. You, you even like translate what's in my mind, you know, that's... I, I, I think we're on the same wavelength, bro. We're on the same wavelength. We th we're thinking the right way, and I, I appreciate that from you. Man, like, really thank you, you know. It's been a long journey, you know. I, I know so it like, has. Uh, I know it has. Man, it's was long. So, um, that period, you know, when I was a kid, you know, mm -hmm. I was, like, not winning a lot. I was not the best guy, you know, in the gym also. Right. And, and you know, I in 2014, mm -hmm. I I competed the World Pro because also I lost in 2013, unfortunately. Damn! So <laughs> let's go. I, okay. I, yeah, I lost. You know, I guess I lost from Mohamed Nawaz. Also. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, 2014, I made it to the final. You know, I was like a yellow belt, I guess, still like yeah. a beginner. You know. But I made it to the final and I said, man, if I win this fight, my dream is going to come to, you know. Wow. And and they put me to fight the day for the other division, like Faisal, Bushesha, you know. And I was, man, I was like in the warm-up area and I was watching Duo Miao, you know. Oh, my up God, for his final. man. What an experience. I, I guess he fight against Thiago Bravo 2014 World Pro Final in Black Belt. Yeah. And I was just so, I mean, I don't know who is this guy, you know. And I said... Who's this guy? And I see a lot of guys like come take pictures with him. Mm -hmm. And I shared with him the same mat, you know, and I didn't know the guy. What? You know? <laughs> I love you it. You know, I, I, I didn't know this guy was a phenomenal, you know. You know, I just go there, you know. <laughs> I also lost the that what bro. I lost the year after also. Okay. Wow. But it would by finals it, or no? Did you get to the finals no, in 2015? 2014 and 15, I made it to the final. Oh my God, so you know? close, but not there. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, then come to 2016, you know, and I also lost in the first round, you know, and I was so devastated at that time, you know. I, like, it was, I was exhausted, you know, mentally. Yes. I was a, a blue belt at the time, you know, 
and that day uh, like someone he came to my life and he changed my life forever you know and he's uh, my current master now he's uh he's he by my santiago i'm like you know this guy i'm really grateful for him you know he helped me a lot you know i after the world i started to cry a lot man and like i was devastated you know and he came to me and he started to like pat my back you know trying to motivate me you know and wow. after that competition i started to work with this guy you know amazing and, story and uh, and when i started to work with him i told him hey it, when we got when the what for finish it was in the middle of the week and mm-hmm. i told him hey iba what what are you going to teach me to be good He, he promised me that day when I lost the award for. Mm-hmm. He told me you're going to be the best, uh, one of the best uh, fighters in UAE. Wow. In the world. Wow, what a statement. And I, and I said, man, what this guy with big ears talking about, you know, it's, it's crazy, you know, I, I don't believe it. <laughs> and uh, the training was back in the middle of the week and I came to him, okay, Heba, please, can you? help me to where were you day. training where were you training at this time was it arena no there was no arena then it oh there was a, no no it wasn't the it was in arena okay and it was like uh, i came for him and i told him heba please what what you gonna help me and he said come next week sunday so we can start the program like in the beginning of the week not in the middle of the week nice and my and in my mind i said man he will not help me you know <laughs> uh And you know, in the training I was not the, like uh, the best guy in the training. You know, I was like the normal guy. You know. Sure. And since I started to train with him, the first, the first, uh, like technique or movement or concept, like we call it, uh, he teach me was the Ashigami, the one leg. You know. Okay. And he showed it to me. It's one position. It's one position like I never saw in my life. I never did it. You know. And he told me, you, you're flexible, you're skinny, and you have long legs. So I tried to do it, you know? Mm-hmm. And when I saw it, I said, man, this is not going to work, you know, because it, you get inside his legs, you know, and it uh, was a, you know, complicated position. Yeah, and it's risky. And I told him, he, yeah, I told him, this is never going to work. He said, try to the training. The first day, I tied with everybody and I swept everybody. Wow. And I said, man, This guy is right. This guy with the big ears is right. You know? <laughs> This guy with the big ears. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, I was like, uh, like, uh, you know, I swept everybody. I was the toughest guy in the gym, <laughs> in the training, you know. Yeah. I, if, I, if I put someone in this game, I sweep him, you know. And uh, we start to develop. We start to work hard, you know. And One time, I was 16, like a juvenile, you know? Right. And the national team invited me to compete in one competition with the big boys, with the adults, you know? Wow. With Faisal Yahya, with the Norman. And I was like, man, these guys are like uh, legends in UAE. And I, I can now represent the country like they do, you know? And it was like an adult competition. There was sure. no like juveniles, you know? It's the sure. JJIF uh, Uh, federation you know right and i go to that competition and it's like an open belt you know it's, i was the blue belt at the time mm-hmm. with the six months experience with the blue belt i got to compete in one competition with adults in the beach you know and um, i fight and i one leg everybody but I swear Ooh. to God, I swept everybody in that one leg, you know? Wow. Straight from the beginning, the, you, you pull the, guard and you go for the Ashigarami. Yeah, uh, that was my strategy. I don't want to pass the guard. I don't want to submit. I love I it. I just want to put, put the one leg, watch the clock, and uh, <laughs> when it's like uh, 30 seconds, I go for the sweep, you know? <laughs> and it was uh, like a perfect strategy, you know? My man, I, nice. And, And I fought with adults, you know. I made it to the final against one g- tough Japanese guy with uh-huh. a purple belt. And uh, he submitted everybody. But he beat me like 6-2, uh, you know. Okay. And 
I got silver, you know, but I was so happy, you know. It felt different. First competition, yeah, first competition with adults, you know. I just got my blue belt, you know, and my, the game work, you know, the concept, the program that Tiba he presented to me work, you know, and I was like, man, I, I guess he's right, you know. I guess yeah. I can be one of the best in UAE. Wow. He gave you a tool. He gave you something to hold on to, to unlock and show you what you could be. I love that he was that smart to see it in you. Yeah, man, you know, and uh, we started to work more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And like came one period, you know, 2017 came. Right. I go to the World Pro and I won the World Pro for the first time oh in my, my life. Oh, my God. And it was the best day of my life. I swear to God. You know? Wow. Wow. It was the best day of my life since uh, 2019 World Pro, you know? It was amazing, you know? That's unbelievable. And, 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 and how many fights did you have that World Pro? Do you remember? I guess four, you know? I was four juvenile, fights. no, it wasn't that Okay, hard. okay. Yeah. But did you use the strategy, like, you, you pull guard, go for the Ashigarami takedown? Yeah, yeah. And I, it worked you know? with, with your fights? Yeah, and uh, at that time, Beautiful. like, the World Pro uh, that World War 2017, we completed one year working. So right. he taught me a lot of uh, concepts more than just the Ashigami, you know. Told me how to make some footlocks, you know. Right. And gave me a lot of success, man. Before I just were waiting for the clock to sweep the guy and take the two points. But now I just put the, the guy hip on the ground and I just go for my footlock and they either tap or I get one advantage. Amazing. You know? And if I get one advantage, I just not, not move, you know? Amazing. I okay. the fight. You okay. Know? <laughs> You're playing the game. You're so, playing so, the you know, game I'm of Shijutsu. Yeah. Tactics and theory part, you know? Absolutely. And uh, and I won that competition. You know, the World Pro was amazing. You know, I won the World Pro. And I won the UIJJF rank for the best juvenile in UAE because I achieved, like, the, I was the first in the rank, you know? The award ceremony and, you're talking about? Yeah. Nice. Yes, I saw that. And, the, and they gave me like a big trophy. And I said, man. Oh, shit. It's amazing, you know. It's like uh, dream come true, you know. Yeah. Everything I ever worked for in my life started to come, you know. And my attitude started to change, you know. I started to become like a, wow, like a more social, you know. More Before confidence. So shy. Yeah, more confident, more shy, more like a strong personality, you know. Right. And it was amazing, you know, and uh, um, it really changed my life, you know. After I went to Japan, I fought like uh, a lot of fight, tough guys, you know, I really beat them, you know. Like, wait, wait, uh, pa pause they, a second. They, they, if, I can, if I can stop you there, before that, you were just UAE. You never traveled out yet. Yeah, I never. Up After to 2017? World, yeah, I okay. started to travel like by myself, you know, before okay. I was going, but with the national team. But uh, 2017, I started to go out, you know, by myself. And you your know? first your first competition outside of the UAE was Japan, Tokyo. No, it was um, it was uh, 2014 actually. Okay. You know, but it was with the youth uh, okay. division, you know. But like uh, for me, I like I went by myself to compete was in Japan, you know. Wow. This was the first time I go by myself. That know? must have been a nice and experience. I, Other than the jiu-jitsu itself, yeah. just going to Japan, getting on the plane, I'm going to go compete. How did that feel? Man, it was good, you know, and it was only me. Like, there was some other people going, but it was, uh, sure. like, I went by myself, you know. And it was, like, a huge experience, you know. I was there. I was feeling good, you know. Like, I'm finally there, you know, to represent my country in the good way, you know. I want to... Incredible. Put the UAE in the first place, you know. I want to do my best, you know. Nice. And I went there, you know. Uh, I fought like a one weight class above mine, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, it was it had like a lot of competitors more than my weight class. I guess sure. it was too. Like I, I would fight one fight if I was in my normal division, but I went okay. like in a high. De like I, I fought uh, five kilos above me, and there okay. were some competitors, you know. Got you. I went there, you know, it was so hard competition, but I won the gold medal, you know. You and won I gold won in that competition? Yeah. Wow. And, and you were alone? You didn't have Hiba and nobody with you? No. Wow. No. Impressive. Okay. And, and was like, 
I was I said my my life couldn't be better, you know. Oh my goodness, man! That's that's such and, an amazing story. Yeah, man. You know, and uh, until then, we start to work even harder, you know. Right, right. And uh, and came September of two thousand seventeen. Mm-hmm. There was one big competition for the national team, you know. Yes. It was in um, Turkmenistan. It's like the Asian indoor games, you know. Yes. Uh, and I was like, you know, young. They take only 18 and above. And mm-hmm. I was 17, you know. Mm-hmm. And they told me, you cannot go because you're young, you know. And I was like angry, you know, because it was a really huge competition at that time, you know. Happens sure. only four years, you know. Sure. And uh, I wanted to go, you know. But they told me, you're young, you cannot go. But uh, lucky for me, the the we'll have one spot in the 56th division. Have one guy. He didn't. He was not able to cut the weight. Mm-hmm. And I was a candidate to to go. I was the B player. I was not the A player. You know, I was not the favorite to win that division. You know. Wow. Okay. And I said, man, I'll go. But I had one big challenge. You know. I had to cut like a 11 kilos Oof. to make it to the weight. Whoa. Why so and much? It was, uh, because it was the only, uh, only sport I can go. Oh and my uh, God. From the, the, the divisions from juvenile to adult are different, you know. It's right. the same, you know. So it was like a nightmare to cut the weight. What did you weeks. do to cut the weight? I not. Man, at that time I was not so experienced. So I went to my master and I told him, hey, I want to cut the weight. How? He told me, you either drink 500 uh, milliliters of water per day or you eat like uh, uh, 200 grams of uh, watermelon. Oh, my God. And he, to- and he told me, I suggest you the watermelon because it have some vitamins and vi- sure. fibers. The water have no nutrition. And wait, I wait. Was- for how long did you do this? Uh, for two weeks. 200 grams of watermelon a day. For two weeks? Yeah, it was crazy, man. That's jail. You went to jail for two weeks. You didn't cut weight. <laughs> man, I you swear. You went to jail in the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the worst experiences of my life to cut the weight, you know? Shit. I was, six, I was 67 and I dropped to 56. So you weren't overweight. <laughs> you, you, you were normal and then you went skinny. Holy man. Man, I, I was just born in skin and a big head, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you made weight? I made the weight. Thank God, imagine uh, you didn't make the weight. <laughs> uh, man, it, uh, it, they would probably kill me because I insist to, for them to put my name. And they say, no, you're young. And when they find one uh, opportunity to put my name, Oof. I don't bring the weight. And like, you know, it will be messed up, you know? But I bring the weight, you know, 56 exactly, you know, wow. 100 grams I'm out, you know. I had to cut my T-shirt to cut, to check the weight, you know. Before <laughs> it was like uh, that competition, you could check your weight with a short uh-huh. and a T-shirt. But <laughs> I, uh, I cut some of the T-shirt so I can be on the weight, you know. Oh and my God, man. Man. What a thing. What a story. And, and you could move? Like you felt okay that day when well, somebody had to like hold you? No, I, I was uh, moving. You know? Okay. Well, man, that's impressive. Good on you. It's like, I know some people that'd be <laughs> dead if they did that. <laughs> I don't know. My power maybe come from God, you know? Yes. So I made that uh, division. Okay. Six. But uh, tomorrow I will face the guys, adults, and they have some brown and black belts. And I was just a blue belt. And I was like, man, I need to back up my words. You know, I insist on everybody. I want to be in that competition. I can do it. I can do it, you know. Now I need to back it up, you know. Wow. And it was a pressure, you know, but it's good. It was a good pressure, you know, because um, it motivated me, you know. Next day, I, I... I start to eat. I start to recover healthy. Mm-hmm. The next day I wake up, I was 62 kilos. Nice. Uh, and I wake up, I jumped from the bed. I'm feeling like alive, you know. I feel I'm so sure. Good. Man, I, w- I wake up, I go for the competition. 
and it was so tough, man. Like a tough competition. Okay. But in the end, I got the gold medal, you know? Wow. And you competed at, with different belts. You were blue belt. Different. Yeah. And this tournament changed my life forever, you know? Unbelievable. Like, uh, you fought purple belts. You fought, you fought brown belts. Yeah, I, I guess two brown belts and two purple belts. And you won all the fights. That's insane. After yeah, after yeah, eating yeah. watermelon, listen, everybody, drink, eat watermelon for two weeks. You'll beat brown belts. My ass, man. That t- <laughs> that's crazy. Man, and, and you know, I I don't know how I did it. You know, I I didn't think about my nutrition, about the way I exercise. You know, I just man, I just go. I'll actually go with them. Wow. And I'll just do it, man, you know. And, uh, <laughs> I'll go actually get up with them. <laughs> man, I actually got up. What a gangster. And it really worked. Man. What a gangster. It really worked. I swear. <laughs> man, and I come back and I was like, when I came back to UAE, I was like, King, you know, oh, everybody fuck yeah. treats me good. You know? Ashi Garami, everybody in the airport. <laughs> Man, it was like, uh, you know, one of the best days of my life, you know, like I actually got everybody. And Unbelievable. Worked, Unbelievable. And uh, at that day, I remembered what uh, my master told me when we first started to work together. He told me, you're going to be one of the best guys in the UAE, you know. Unbelievable. And. And he was right, you know. I did my yes. best, you know. And we achieved, you know. And uh, uh, I was like on a winning streak mm-hmm. until uh, the 2018 World Pro, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, at that World Pro, I didn't pre- made my preparation with the, my master. He had some other duties. Okay. Uh, and I was like, you know, just doing everything like... Uh, for my interpretation. I didn't have like the enough experience to do. Sure. And uh, that time I I got to what something maybe not a lot of guys they know it. It's the overtraining, you know. Yes, they burn out. That's what happened to me. Yeah, like I start to lose a lot of weight and I'm eating like normal. And you're feeling fatigued and just fatigued, lethargic, yeah. Exhausted, depressed, you know. And I was like, uh, you know, bad experience. I got to compete, you know. I was competing so bad, you know. I was uh, one of the worst performances of my life. I lost in the quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. But I lost, you know, with these, you know. You didn't feel the like it was it by. was Omar competing. You felt it was like somebody else in your body competing. Yeah, man. Like uh, I was fighting and I was telling myself, Omar, come on, wake up. What are you doing? Wow. And, and, you know, it was like a bad experience, you know? Especially early yeah, in, in know. a person's career, I feel you're, you're just exemplifying the importance of the relationship between coach and student in, in competition. When you suddenly, your coach, the one that gave you that firepower to get started, he wasn't able to be there. Sure, obviously, he has commitments. It just gave you an experience insight that you were still at a phase where you needed that kind of monitoring on your game. That's part of the secret sauce that that leads to success, right? For sure, man. Like I had uh, like a, another coach also with yes. me and uh, he was there, you know, but sure. it was not the same connection. Yeah, you know? the, the connection is extremely uh, important between student and coach. It's not anybody can come in, okay, arm bar, pass the guard. No, it's, you need to have a guy that understands you, how you feel, what makes you worried, what makes you good. He has to connect that way. Exactly, man, because, you know, like one mentor, he knows everything about you, how the way you think, the way you act. Correct. It's not like you just come, okay, do this position. If if uh, coaching in BJJ it's that way, I can be a coach right now. I can go for one guy mm-hmm. and I tell them, okay, do this. Exactly. Sit, sleep, die, you know? <laughs> exactly. Like, if it was that easy, you know, everybody Absolutely. would be like a BJJ coach, you know, but it's really hard, you know, you need to understand the person, yes. the way he feels, you know, how you um, give him the information, you know, the words. Right. It's, it's a must, you know. To Absolutely. To achieve the high performance. Like, uh, like I told you, it's not only like physical and technically have similar aspects for uh, like uh, the best performance, you know. The mental is very important. So, and look, Omar, I want to tell you something. There's a, there's a Roman philosopher. I'm a, I'm a big fan of psychology and philosophy. I, I actually studied a little bit of sports psychology. I got really interested in it on my own personal side. 
There's a Roman philosopher called Seneca, and he has a famous quote. It says, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. A lot of people, they look at someone like you, like, man, he got lucky. Or uh, like, you want gold and everything. They, they don't know your background. They don't know your history. Like, oh, he's just a talent. He's a phenom, you know. But what happens with you is luck is not that. There's no such thing as luck, luck. It's you have to be ready to be lucky. It, it doesn't like, no, not, no good blessings happen to you if you're not in the place to receive them. And what you did is you went out there, you put yourself on the test, you started young, you got heartbroken so many times, enough times that will make most people be like, screw this shit, <laughs> I'm out. But you kept going, you know, four years, four years of losing. And man, this is most people that are in the jujitsu community can relate. Some people listening to this that didn't compete need to understand that the competition is not just go in fight. It's delays, it's the warm up area, it's people looking at people, you in the tunnel, going out with the other guy, it's them calling your name, looking at the TV, the audience, your friends, there's so much stress on the body. To go through that time after time for four years and not get the result you want is devastating. So when you were saying like, I was heartbroken, it's not heartbroken, it was devastating. I know what you mean, absolutely. So you came back, you had this winning streak and and regained, you found your personality in jiu-jitsu, I feel, from what you're saying, right? Man, it's uh, like, uh, it's really hard, you know? And uh, you need to have, like, a strong heart for it. You need to love what you're doing, you know? Yes. It's not about luck. It's not about talent, you know? I don't, it's not luck that helped me to cut 11 kilos no, with, no. with watermelon. Exactly. <laughs> oh, shit, yes. Definitely yeah, not luck. Man, like, yeah, it's, uh, you know? He, like if someone wants to do it, he really had have to love it. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like uh, okay, I just want to be a champion. Okay, I'll just go to the mat. Right. And if I lose, uh, you know, I don't care anymore. Yeah, it's, that's not the attitude that will really get you like, far. You need to have like a discipline. You know, the, Correct. it's a really important aspect. You know, so like uh, I, I for me, I, I guess I really started jujitsu. 2016 you know because uh, I like that okay I've been I've been training a lot in, in these years you know like before uh, 2016 but I was not like focused like 2016 when it really hurt me real bad you know it kicked me under the belt in 2016 you know right. so that's where I started man I need to be a world champion and what, I, what did I you okay, do but I need what, what was your training like? Walk us through, like, what changed? How many times a week did you start training? And, and how did you change your mindset? Uh, like I told you, I met uh, my master yeah. in 2016. Mm -hmm. And he started to guide me, you know. Like, uh, he, he's not like a world champion or anything. But he saw. He saw. he been with world champions. He have experience, you know. Yes. And he shared with me experience, you know. Like, uh, and this you cannot get anywhere from any place you can't i can't go to supermarket mm -hmm. and say okay give me like uh <laughs> one kilogram of experience you know you need to be there you know and this guy like he that. have a lot of experience he have sure. a lot of pain also he he been heartbroken a lot in his life you know sure and he he's giving me and he's helped me me to achieve what he couldn't achieve you know so i'm really grateful for this you know wow. and uh and this time, you know, 2016, I started to work like a professional. Before I was, you know, like uh, working uh, one hour a day, like maybe four hours a week, you know. But uh, nowadays, I work like eight hours a day, you know. Wow. Eight hours so, a day of jujitsu. Uh, six hours of jujitsu, two hours of physical training, you know. Unbelievable. That's, that's the next level. Like for people listening and wondering, what, what are competitors doing these days? Six hours of jujitsu. That's as much as people do in a week. You're doing in a day <laughs> and two hours of physical training. What about diet and nutrition? A diet, I have my own uh, nutritionist nice. and like a physical coach, you know. Even my master introduced me to him. Nice. His name is Luis Philippe, you know. Okay. He's a, he's, a, he's a cool guy, you know. He's also a friend of mine, you know. Shout out to Luis. Uh, nice. Yeah, man. He's a really good friend, you know. Cool. He's like a brother, you know. Cool. And uh, I hope he's watching now. He's in Brazil now. But uh, yeah. I, I got introduced to him after the World Pro 2018. Okay. You know? Because in that time, I came to the adult division and 
2018 and it was not easy like the juvenile you know it's like mm-hmm. a different level you know yes from the juvenile and they are like a big switch you know so i was making some physical thing but i was making only basics you know i mm-hmm. need the one guy like a professional you know who can help me who can uh, help me to uh, lose weight you know not to eat only watermelons for two <laughs> two weeks you know <laughs> yeah. i need the one guy you know to uh, <laughs> to like, monitor all to year yeah, like to work in science, you know, and sure. and was the perfect guy, the, my physical coach, you know, and we start to work, you know, a lot, you know, and it was 2018 the Asian Games, you know. Did you put on? Did you put some weight after you, after you started training and changing your food? Did you put on some mass, some muscle, some weight? I felt that you did during that time. I, I did, but not a lot. Just okay. to keep uh, in my weight division, you okay, know. Okay, I, I don't want to go like bigger, you know. Mm-hmm. So came the Asian Games 2018. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was my first year in adult, and I was a blue belt, and also was like a brown and black belt in that uh, tournament. It was sure. a big tournament also, and I fought, fought, fought like uh, five fights. I made it to the final, and I was like winning, man, and. In the five seconds, man, I just made one mistake that cost me the gold medal for the Asian Games, man. And it what was, was the mistake? Competition. I was holding him in the single leg, you know, mm-hmm. and I tried to kick his other leg. And that gave him momentum to jump on my back and put one hook, one advantage in the oh, last no. five seconds. And I lost, man. It was my main goal of 2018. Oh, my God. And I okay. lost. And I lost just... Uh, like uh, the last five seconds and I was man I I was it was crazy you know the time but it you shows know, you it, sho- it, it shows Amar what level of competition you were at that one small mistake like that makes you lose the fight like that's the level you're competing it's not an average normal level for people to understand you know yeah man it was like a bound black belt you know it was <laughs> and I was just a blue belt you know so yes. it was a real next level thing, you know. Yes. Uh, I lost the Asian Games, but in the same time, I said, "Man, I beat some brown belts. I beat nice, some black belts nice. in that competition." Yes. Imagine if I can go compete in uh, my division, you know, like a blue belt, you know. Absolutely. I can do a good job, you know. And we start to work, you know, work hard, you know. I start to win some competitions in the United States and other com- right. places you know the grand slam and then uh, yeah okay i wanted you know that submitted everybody at that day you know wow every single and, fight submission uh, yeah i love it okay and uh and then in november of 2018 there was one big competition so what championship for ggif you can call it the ggif awards you know mm-hmm. it was in sweden you know the and jiu-jitsu, the, the jiu-jitsu one. Yeah, you know. Okay. The national team, they picked me to go, you know. Perfect. And uh, it was like a pleasure, you know. I always want to represent the national team, you know. Of course. But the thing is, it was like a little bit hard, you know, for uh, for uh, my division, you know. I have a lot of black belts, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I usually compete in 62. And I just sat with uh, my master. And I told him, hey, what do you think? I, I, I'm willing to go there and get, and get you know, like uh, messed up. And he told me, can you do it for uh, 56? And I, and I told him, yeah, but let me ask my nutritionist. And I did ask him. Okay. And uh, he told me, you can, but we need to start like uh, in a long period so we can cut properly with performance. Yes. And I said, okay, let's go for 56 again. How, how, much time, <laughs> how much time did he give you that you needed to cut Since, with performance? Uh, almost two months at two. that time. Waiting was 23rd of November. Sure. And I started down like uh, 27 or 28th of uh, September. So it's like almost two months, you know. Okay. And man, I almost died at that uh, time <laughs> because I cut 12 kilos that competition wow yeah but you know i, I didn't i didn't do it with watermelon this time i did do it with <laughs> performance but i had to eat like a little bit in one day i need to eat like a surprise and 100 grams of meat any meat like fish chicken or 
big. And like there was the small meals. So start to cut. And it was a hell. It was even worse than the last time when I cut with a watermelon. Because at that time, I, it was like a short time for two weeks. It sure. was like painful. But for two weeks, you know, I, I can handle it. But this time, it was not so tough like uh, two years ago, one year ago. Right. But it was so frustrating, man. I start to even not think about anything, man. I don't. I start. I stop video games. I, I, I just want to make it to the weight, you know. You just want to get to the finish line. I was like dead, man. I was yeah, man. And when I and I, I suffered a lot at that time, baby. I okay. hated myself. The two and, months is a uh, long time to cut weight. Yeah, especially if you want to go hang out with your friends. Oh my you want to go out and they all eat like normal and i was just like watching like a zombie mm-hmm. it was <laughs> it was a bad experience i'm sure it was so i made it there 23rd of november i was dead mm-hmm. and i was the first guy in line for the waiting yes. i said man i would be two hours before they open the wait just to take my spot <laughs> they opened the wait i just go there i was the first guy to check the weight i was even under the weight you know and the weight with the one kilo i checked Wait, I drink a lot of water right. and I start to eat a lot, man. Eat pasta, rice, chicken, meat, you know. I don't care if it's tasty <laughs> or no. <laughs> the first thing I ate was one, one kilo of uh, pasta. I bring my food scale with me and I just put one, one kilo of pasta and I start to eat like crazy. And even though when I finish that one kilo of pasta, I still feel hungry. I want to eat more. I, I was so hungry. And, and, and how much weight did you put back on? Man, like I felt uh, the blood start to flow again in my veins. You know? Oh, man. I I'm felt sure. cold inside my body. It was in Sweden and it was in November. But before I checked the weight, I couldn't even feel the temperature. You know, I can I can Oof. walk on the street with like a normal T-shirt and a short, like, a, like I'm going for the beach. And I see everybody like wearing jackets and everything. That's crazy. And I was like, man, uh, oh, it's not so cold, you know. <laughs> but when I start to hydrate, I start to eat. <laughs> man, I felt so cold. I swear to God. Even though I was in my room of the hotel, and right. I was like wearing a jacket, and I felt like so cold. Your body so, temperature uh, was going crazy. How, how much weight did you put on, you think, before the competition? Like you cut down all that weight to, down to 56 what did you weigh competition time, do you think? I guess 62 also. 62, okay. No, I, no it was between 60 and 61. Okay. 60 All and right. 61. So that must have felt yeah, damn so good, I man. Go, man, the next day I wake up, I was so hungry. I go eat maybe the biggest breakfast of my life, man. Maybe and you weren't worried? Omelets, you know, you weren't worried about your stomach when you're competing, eating uh, so much and regaining the weight? My fight was um, 2 p.m. Okay. And I wake up like 6 a.m. Okay, so you uh, had time. I wake up because I was feeling so confident. Like, it's going to be my day. I will nice. win. It was a really hard competition. Mm-hmm. And I said, man, it's going to be my day. But yeah. uh, I was so hungry. And, uh, <laughs> first first there, food. Eat a lot. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Man, it was the biggest breakfast of my life. I went there to the competition. I was so confident of mm-hmm. my abilities. I was confident of the army, And I won it was a real tough competition, but I won in the final. How many fights it did was you have? The only guy in the national team who won in our world. Uh, I guess four or five. I don't remember clearly. Four or five fights with open belts, and you won it. Open belt. I guess I fought. There was one guy. He was really good. The IBJJF competitions. He was a brown belt, like winning Europeans no gi. Right. Uh, Woods no gi. You know, in brown belt, mm-hmm. and he was there. And I just met him in the first round. Wow. And I was like, whoa, man, really. It was like a boost for my mental skill. I said, man, I beat maybe the toughest guy in the division so I can make it to the gold medal. And I went there and I won the gold medal. And it was like a a huge thing for my life, man. It changed my life forever, man. I'm sure. Their own belt. The first person in the history of uh, JJIF to win gold medal in the divisions of under 21 and, and above 21. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, double open belt, you know. And this competition, like, yeah, it's, uh, this competition, like a uh, GGIF Woods, have like a two uh, two categories. The category who's juniors, who's under 21, right. and seniors, 
with above 21. At that year, 2018, I won both. Unbelievable. You know, I guess I was the first guy in the history of GGIF to make this. It was like amazing. <laughs> it, uh, it was really a nice experience. What an achievement. And did you have a strategy going into that competition like you had before with Hibamar? Were you like Ashigarami? Like, did you guys go in with a plan or was it just you were confident with your game? Uh, no, I was going with a plan. Good, okay. With the Ashigarami to hold everybody because it's like nice. rules, you know, open belts. Yes. I can make uh, two holds. Even nice. though I cannot make until now because I'm a purple belt. Right. But it's like open rules. And open belt, so I can I can do it. Perfect. And we come to 2019. Everybody was treating me like a star, you know, like who was amazing. I was confident. Came the Grand Slam, Abu Dhabi, you know, 2019. Right. And like I made it to the final, and I faced one tough opponent. And he's a good friend of me also. He's uh, Jefferson, you know, Commander Group. Jeff I oh, yes, you know him, you know? yes, I know him. I watched that fight. I know which fight you're talking about. Was that where he caught you in a triangle? He caught me in the triangle and he really gave me a serious injury, you know, and he made, I what? guess he broke my arm. And I still, I guess now one year and a half and I still feel pain in my elbow. You know? Oh man. And I did in that tournament, I did the same mistake like I did in the World Pro 2018. I made the, like the overtraining, you know, and destroyed my body. It was not the best performance, you know, but like, yeah. Hands, uh, hands up for uh, Jefferson. He really made a good job, beat me really. Right. And, but, but the problem is, it was the Europeans in Portugal. I beat Jeff for Europeans. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go, you know, really. And I booked my ticket for the competition and everything. But I got the, the injury in my elbow for the, my flight in one day. Mm -hmm. And everybody recommended for me, hey, stay in UAE don't go don't compete and right. I was like no man I I, I want to go even though I have one broken arm and I couldn't move it wow. I told them I will cut the weight I will go and I'll do my best in that, in that moment uh, it, it really like shook up my uh, mind my confidence uh, yeah, was, you're going there with uh, an injury. What was it? Was it know? fully broken or like it was hyper extended? No, no, it was broken. Oh my god. Okay. It, <laughs> and it was it was like uh, like really bad and I went there to Portugal and I to be honest I did a good job even with a broken arm I competed even better than uh, the <laughs> Grand Slam how did you do? I made it to the quarter final well, after like uh, three fights okay and I lost the champion by every decision oh, okay impressive and, with uh, a broken arm yeah you know when I lost I was like, so devastated the nature of the results I sure. said, man, this guy who like uh, beat me by a decision, he was a champion. So man, maybe I did a good job, you know, even with a one broken arm. Absolutely. And I came back to UAE like a devastated, heartbroken, and mentally. Uh, I was like, you know, I, I don't know if I can complete the World Pro in April because it was my main goal that uh, year in 2019. Right. And I said, man, maybe, maybe I, I, I can't compete for the next six months maybe because it was really you know bad injury for me and but my uh, physical coach mm -hmm. he told me look man i'm a physiotherapist you know he, he specialist in this also perfect and he told me just give me 21 days exactly and you will get back in performance like fighting good and i said man i, I had my doubt okay. like i know his qualities is good but uh, i said man 21 days really i can't even Brush my teeth. I'm sure. I'm sure it was uh, difficult to imagine. And yeah. no surgery. Uh, no, no. I I didn't want to make the surgery. I get you. He just okay. told me uh, 21 days. And okay. I told him, okay, man. But I don't think I would be like before. You know? mm -hmm. And he was correct, man. In 21 days, perfect. Wow. But it's enough to complete. But I need to be like very cautious about it. I can move. And I said, man, I, you know, I can do it. I can be the World Pro Champion this year. And I remember the chairman for the UAGDF, Mr. Admiral. Mm-hmm. He was contacting me, man, and he was supporting me a lot, you know, in this bad time. You know. That's amazing. It, okay. was a really, it was a really hard time for me at that time. And like him, like personally talking to me and supporting me, like I'm really grateful for this. You know. He was there with me all the journey. So even before he knew me, like this guy, he affected my life a lot. And he really was supporting me. Uh, my master was supporting me, you know, to overcome my adversity. Sure. I started to fight some big competitions. And I start to be some of the best guys, you know, in the world, in my division, you know. And we all broken up. I guess I can be the world champion. I went there to the world pro. I made it to the final. 
and was against the same guy who beat me in the European. Wow. And I was like, man, no, this time I'm going to beat him. I, I can do it. And I just go there, you know, did my best, fought hard, and I beat him like uh, 10 to 6 points. Unbelievable. Uh, and it was the best day of my life, man. Uh, Unbelievable. So far, it's a- so far, it's the best day of my life. The curse and of the was, world pro is over. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, it was, it was like a overcoming adversity, you know, because a yes. lot of people at that time, they told me, oh my, man, you, you cannot do it. You have one serious injury. And I said, man, no, I can do it. I can do it. I can be the world pro champion. And I did. Very impressive and, attitude. Uh, they gave me the perfect belt. I, that is, uh, I wanted to talk to you about that. That's a very special moment for you. I, I, I actually watched that. So I saw Hiba Mar come up to you. Take out that blue belt and put on your purple belt. How? T- walk me through. How did you feel? Man, you know, it was uh, like a surprise. I saw Mr. Abdelmanam coming mm-hmm. and I saw Hiba coming in and I said, man, and Hiba showed the purple belt and Abdelmanam put it on my waist and Hiba tied it, you know? Wow. Man, it was amazing. And even with that, I was the number one in the ranking for the adult blue belt. Yeah. In, you know, in the world. Then I made my I want to I want to I want to stop you there real quick because you skipped over something very important I think within your let's say jiu-jitsu career because after that event you got your purple belt but you also got an award you got a trophy for the best blue belt ranked in UAE Jiu-Jitsu Federation right yes so so when, when that happened Amar I feel I feel like this was really your shining star moment because you first you had the Asian in in Sweden where you won double gold and then you had this competition where you got uh, first place with, with a nearly broken arm basically and then you got the award for top blue belt player this is really when I I recognize Khalas Omar is a rising star in jiu-jitsu this is this guy watch out for him because he's going to be a force in the UAE in the next coming years like we're going to hear Omar all the time the reason I wanted to even like I, I wanted to sit down and talk to you is because I was so impressed by by how much I heard about you there's so many guys that you know you feel like their relationship with the jiu-jitsu is ups and downs. Your relationship with jiu-jitsu is very loyal. I feel like you've got the heart of a jiu-jitsu fighter. And, but that moment, man, everybody started telling me, man, this guy, Omar, check him out. This guy, Omar, watch out for him. Uh, Emiratis, all of the young guys. I was training in al Wahda club at that time. So we have that in common. Now you're training there. And all the guys, they knew you. Everybody, I know they looked up to you. It was something very impressive to them what you were doing. You have become the, let's say, the poster child of this generation in the UAE. And I have to give you credit for that. All your tenacity, your perseverance got you to this point. So all I have to say is, Kafu, bravo alayk. Like, this is it. Like they said, Jiu-Jitsu is like an individual game, you know. But there's a lot of people who helped. Uh, so true. To, for me to come. So I'm true. grateful for many guys. Like if I can talk now, there are a lot. But I'm grateful for forever. Sheikh Mohammed, you know, like yes. I told you in the beginning, he changed my life. Abdul and this guy, you know, he don't like to shine a lot. He's mm-hmm. like oh, so humble, but it's hard for me to talk about my career and w- without mentioning this guy. He changed my life. Mr. Fuad Hawish from uh, Bounce Sports, he's also the same. Right. He, he like support me a lot. And then my Master Heba, like a big shout out for them. Absolutely, big maybe, shout out for them. Maybe we'll not be making this interview without them. Like, uh, I'm really grateful for them forever. You Absolutely. Know? And uh, I'm doing it for the UAE. And they have one goal in my mind, but unfortunately, the coronavirus happened. <laughs> yes. Is I want to shine. I want to shine in the world, the IBGGF world. You this will. This is my, like, uh, biggest dream. So, w- one important thing I think that happened after this competition as well is you got sponsorship, right? This was a very important part in your career. Yeah, I did. And and uh, and this was, was through the UAE Jiu Jitsu. Through the UAE Jiu Jitsu and uh, Palm Sport. Yes. They start sponsoring me to help me and support me to compete uh, outside the country to get more experience. Sure. And this is like one big gift for me. Like I can't ask uh, something better for it. Even I didn't think about it before. And you know what they say? Like it's one quote from one Spider Man movie. You know? Okay. They say with the great power comes great responsibility you know uh-huh. and they they, get, they gave me this because they believe i can do something and yes. it's a privilege for me sure it's a gift i can use it to become a better version to make the uae like the first place in the world a lot of paths we can take in my life in our life sure. like some people poverty you know they they have no 
no, no other way, only one way, and to be a champion in and to be good in whatever they are. In. Right. But here in you, like in UAE, like uh, Alhamdulillah, we have like a lot of options you can make to shine. Yes. And some they choose the easy way. I chose the hard way. I, chose, I like. That. I wanna be a world champion because I, I never was hungry in my life. Like uh, only when I cut the weight. Yeah. But I never was that really, you know. <laughs> but I was hungry in a different way. I, I was get hungry you. in my soul, you know, man. It's like something. I cannot test, you know. I want to make my stamp in the world. I, I want to make my legacy. That's a story, man. Listen, I, I want to tell you something. The UAE is my home for as long as I know it. I'm born here. My family's been here for 40 years. When I see the UAE Jiu-Jitsu Federation, when I see you, when I saw Faisal Al-Kitbi in the beginning, okay, I associate you guys all in, in that same box because I have a huge love for, for Abu Dhabi, for the UAE. I, this is my life. This is all I know. And when I see how it's developed and improved, like when we were kids, it wasn't the same country. Like people think it was wealthy always. And it was always wealthy in a type, but it, it went through so much development in my lifetime. So when I see today, like the Federation and what they've built, the school system that they're providing the Emirati kids, the jujitsu that, man, I really feel is playing such a big role in their lives. You took it as a competitor and you found that burning desire in your soul to have a legacy. But even the guys that don't have a burning soul for a legacy and don't see it as a future, it is affecting their lives even on a smaller level. Jujitsu has had such a huge impact on the UAE. And I'm so happy and proud of this entire project because I get to see guys like you, man. I mean, you're obviously educated. Your English is perfect. You're a competitor. You're talking nutrition, sports, science. You're talking about cutting weight, physiotherapy from an injury, overcoming adversity, winning multiple gold medals in Tokyo, London. Man, 30 years ago in the UAE, to hear this, you would have been like, ah, tahshish. So you see where we are today. It's unbelievable, man. And, and, and you are the... <laughs> The exemplification of what I just said, you are the, the product of many years of wisdom from the royal family, many years of initiative from people like Abdul Munam to build an infrastructure and a means for people to success. And I'm so like, I'm telling you, meeting you and talking with you, I really hope leaves an impact on the people listening because if they want to be something in the UAE, they can be it. They just need to get out and like have the burning desire that you did, that drive that made you lose from 2012 to 2016 and keep going. This is what you need to succeed. Like they're there, they're ready to give you what you need. They're ready to lift you to the highest places, but you gotta be ready to go with it. You gotta be ready to take punches too. And you did it, you paid your price, right? You paid the iron price, like they would say. And you got to the level that you need to be to start succeeding. And Umar, man, I feel like your future is bright. I feel with your mindset, I can't wait to see you in, again, in purple belt gold, in brown kicking ass when footlocks are in the game and you can rip people's toes off and heels off, get a kick ass, and then black belt, bro. I want to see you dominating in black belt and putting UAE indefinitely indefinitely on that map you get black belt you get that gold you get it in brazil i'll be so fucking excited for you you have no idea man, it's my dream man to like to achieve the gold medal and the black belt man it's, it's hell yeah i wake up i think about i sleep i think about you know it's it's a big thing you know like i want to show the, the people of you they kick ass also yes like, to watch out for them this yes is what i want i want to this is the legacy I leave. I want to leave behind. Like, like I want. Once I had one quote, mm -hmm. they say it's good to put something like one goal, and you work so hard to reach it, but you didn't reach it, but you still work for it, and you reach it. Yes. Because you feel like I'm done. But you know what I wanna? I don't wanna just win the words in black belt. I wanna that, but what I want most is to create one legacy, put the UAE on the map. That, yes. This is what I think about. I can, I'm doing my best to make it the worldwide. And I believe with this support from the royal family, from Abdul Manam, from Mr. Fouad Dawis, from Sport, it's possible, man. It's possible. On what you're saying, Faisal Al-Kitbi is a star by any measures. And everybody in the Jiu-Jitsu community, uh, in the Emirat or outside, they, they have love and respect for him. He started early. He was one of the first products of the UAE Jiu-Jitsu experiment. The UAE Jiu-Jitsu experiment, it wasn't just 
well, we want champions, we want gold medals. The UAE doesn't need gold medals, <laughs> you know. The UAE, yeah. the, the purpose I feel behind jiu-jitsu in the UAE wasn't just the sports. It's the result, the impact it has on people. Because when you have kids that are lost, that are just freaking out, running, doing nothing, at any age, in any country, you can't predict what the outcome of their life will be. But when you give them something so powerful like jiu-jitsu, you know that they're going to learn discipline. You know they're going to get humble. They're going to realize, oh, no, I'm not the toughest guy out there. Oh, no, I can't be a bully. I can't be. Th- I have to stay humble. I have to learn. I have to meet people to learn new things. Like they, they teach them all of these skills. So it was an experiment that started out. You had one, two guys that really stuck with it. I, I would say Faisal Kitbi is one of those guys. And they got to that black belt level. But now your generation, Amar, I feel is the generation where we're getting up. We're getting like the UAE jiu-jitsu experiment has reached a certain height where now it's getting the fruits of the seeds they planted. You get what I mean? I totally agree. You I are, totally uh, agree with Basically, you. now we're arriving at a point where the UAE is starting to mature in its Emirati jiu-jitsu talent. We've had hundreds and hundreds of kids go through the system, go through the, uh, the, the protocol of learning, and we've got a few rising stars, but now I feel like your age group, the 15 to 20, are the ones that went through a full lifespan of real high-quality jiu-jitsu, Hibamar Santiago jiu-jitsu kind of style, you know what I mean? And if you stick with it, there is no reason why you cannot achieve the dream that you're saying and building a legacy for you and other Emiratis in the future. So do you feel jiu-jitsu in the UAE has become the number one sport? Yeah, so far, I guess it's number two because football, it's more famous than it can. It gets more attention. But I guess it's a matter of time, you know, because Jiu-Jitsu in UAE, it's like really young. It started like with the media and everything, I guess, maybe five years ago. Right. And it's really young until the people get to know it. Like some people are not so familiar with Jiu-Jitsu. They don't know what's Jiu-Jitsu, you know, but they know what's football. I believe like soon, a lot of people are going to know Jiu-Jitsu and Inshallah, going to be the, the number one sport in UAE, you know. If people start to know and start to know the benefits of this sport, mm-hmm. I guess they're going to start to like it because yeah. it's a really like therapy for me. Yes. When I st- I'm stressed or anything, when I do jiu-jitsu, I just forget about anything. And it's, it's not only about jiu-jitsu, you know, it's science. Yes. When you make some activities, mm-hmm. some I forgot the name for the hormones. It's a hormone for happiness, I guess. And you start to forget. Yes. All your stress. The endorphins. All time. the endorphins you know, are flowing. Focus on how to choke the guy. Yes. Yeah, man. It's amazing, man. This sport's like magic. So I, w- I want to ask you something. I, I want to um, basically highlight something and a word of appreciation. This whole project, uh, for many people that are listening, I'm sure you know the history of the project of UAE Jiu-Jitsu. But just to give a quick recap, basically, UAE really expanded their Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, under the guidance of His Highness Sheikh Tahnoon. Like, I feel like this is the, the starting point of Jiu-Jitsu. Brought it here, ADCC was formed, and the rest is history. Everybody knows about Jiu-Jitsu today. But when the Crown Prince, uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, really you know, pushed the sport because he felt its impact on the youth in the UAE, this is when it entered the school systems. This is when it started really growing in the military, in the police, and everything. So in order to achieve this, in order to get to this point, they created Palm Sports, and the UAE Jiu-Jitsu Federation, and to make it run, and to make it really grow into what it is today, they had to get so many black belts from Brazil to the UAE, and it was like an export for Brazil at a point. All of these black belts are here, and it's become like a capital for Jiu-Jitsu, changing lives. So like, for example, the Omar situation, you've got Hibamar Santiago, and it's not a relationship of, well, uh, coach and student, like football coach and student is understandable. It's like brothers almost, right? It's like big brother, younger brother situation. Exactly. Exactly, you know. So I wanted to ask you, Omar, what, what do you have to say to the Brazilians that are here in the UAE today, going to school every day, trying to change the lives of these kids, trying to teach them jujitsu and, and giving all of their heart? Because, you know, being a coach, you're giving a piece of you to your student. You're not just teaching them information. You're giving them a piece of your life. So what do you have to say to the Brazilians in the UAE? And, you know, these people are like uh, soldiers for this country, man. Because, you know, they, they had a lot of experience in their life. They had a lot of pain, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, have a lot of background. Mm-hmm. And they reached to one point that they want to share the good 
things with the people of the UAE. I yes. believe this is like a really good uh, thing that uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed did, you know, mm-hmm. because he saw how the jujitsu effect on his son and his brother. Mm-hmm. And he said, if this effect on my family, then it can affect on uh, the people, uh, my sons in the school. Yes. And the people, the Brazilian people, I really admire them and I like them a lot. They're smart. What I saw from them, they only give good example, you know, they only give positive uh, Absolutely. Feedbacks, you know, they they help the people to go. Like they have a, a lot of impact on my life of who I am now. And I'm really grateful for this opportunity for the Brazilian people. This is like a second home, you know. I saw a lot of people. I once uh, was a new son. And for mm-hmm. a surprise, he wanted to name his son Zaid, you know. And oh. I told him, really? But, but uh, you're not Arabic. Uh, he said, I want to name him Zaid because... I'm so grateful for this country for what it gave for me. Wow. And wow. and I was like uh, really emotional. And I said, man, thank God that this country like is one of the best countries in the world. In my opinion, it's the best country in the world. You know, this country gave a lot of opportunities for people. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, he gave a lot of uh, opportunities. He did. He gave. So words cannot be for these people that, that's a beautiful response from you and beautiful words towards the jiu-jitsu community here in the uae like i i really i like what you said there about the brazilians being soldiers of the uae because listen man i tell you something uh, i'm i'm so interested in this entire process because in the time that this uae jiu-jitsu was formed in palm sports so many brazilians moved their families in life it's been like more than 10 years already right and you guys are growing up together in the environments. I love seeing the mix of the culture and I feel like it's really had an impact. And I love to see the Emirati impact on the Brazilians. When I see a, a, a jiu-jitsu coach wearing a kandora, when I see them with the ghitra, when, when I see them uh, you know, sit, sitting with the Emirati teammates, in the desert or, or having much boost and, and like sitting i'm so happy bro because this is what it means it's not just gold medals and competitions it's crossing cultures it's opening the minds it's creating brotherhoods and relationships teaching emiratis how to deal with such diverse culture and teaching the diverse cultures how to deal with emiratis while keeping the culture it's so beautiful you have no idea how much love i have for the country, but for this jujitsu experiment. This jujitsu in the UAE makes me so happy every day, brother. You have no understanding. Like, I'm not Emirati myself, but I'm born in the UAE, and it's the only home I know. So I consider myself Emirati, and there's Brazilians today that earn Emirat, that consider themselves Emirati, and would, you know, sacrifice themselves for the UAE. And that's really the love that you get out of it. it all. This is the beauty of sports. Sports is... A, a gateway to life, a gateway to success. You know what I mean? It's a lifestyle, like I told you, man. Like jiu-jitsu, there's no sport like this, you know, like not like uh, football's not like this, like yes. uh, basketball's not like this, but uh, jiu-jitsu, it's create uh, this connection. So like, much. Uh, it's create one community, really great for sports, really amazing. You know, I, I focus all my energy on this thing because I really love it. I, I will, because like I told you, I have one thing to make one legacy in my life, you know? Yes. And this is what I'm working on. I want to do my best for the country that gave me a lot. Yes. The, this country gave me everything. So it's my job, it's my duty to pay it back. I know I will never be able to pay back what this country gave for me. They gave me a lot of things, but right. at least I'll be doing my best. That's, that's very true. And, and you see jujitsu being your career, competing, yes. teaching in the future. This is your life. That's it. It's jujitsu for me. Yes, I, I want to do it, you know. I want to inspire people to be the best version of uh, themselves. Omar, I'm, I'm, I can't wait. I honestly can't wait. I'm going to, we've had a bit of connection issues and stuff. I'm going to fix this video. I'm going to fix the audio. I'm going to spend as much time as I can doing it because, listen, I really think people need to hear this. People need to get to know you. And I need people to get invested in you because I'm going to be a fan of yours forever. And I want people to also support you because we have a guy that is a great person, very focused, a great jujitsu guy and humble, very humble, Amar. And and I want you to carry this forward and I wish you so much success, brother. I I hope the doors open up for you everywhere. I want to see you climb the ranks and I'll be cheering you all the way through. And everybody in the UAE and even outside, inshallah, will be cheering for you as well one day. So, so, man, it's like a... 
really grateful for you, man. Like, thank you so much for all this kind word. I really appreciate it. Really, thank it's you the so it's much. the least I can say to you, and I I just hope it it pushes you even forward. How can people get to know you? How can people connect with you? You're most active on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. They can just contact me. I, I'm available like twenty four seven. You know. Nice, nice. Still young. I love it. Okay, so guys, on Instagram, <laughs> his Instagram is at o underscore bjj. Correct. Yes. All right. So if you guys want to catch him on Instagram, be sure to yeah. find him. Let me just make sure at o underscore bjj, and you'll find Omar Muhammad. Hit him with a follow. Show him some love and support. Keep your eyes out on him. He's going to be on every jiu-jitsu platform in the very near future. You believe me. Habib Omar, thank you so much for spending the time with me, man. So, man, it's a pleasure, man. <laughs>